Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I wanted to show you this. This is one of my sponsors, old school sponsor, I Trust Capital. They're running a contest where you can win a trip to, um, all expense paid trip to LA to go to a USC football game. How about them apples? I actually went last year to, um, to uh, I Trust Capital. I actually had a, um, they, they were doing, uh, advertising at USC they had some of the coolest seats I've ever been in that was literally down on the uh, on the field so if you want to win their, their little contest here you can click on that link right there a little birdie also told me that today I trust capital is going to be listing some new digital assets might want to check that out too Check this out, multi-year triangle pattern. When the breakout happens in 2024, XRP will hit $25 to $30. This guy caught my attention because he's got 52,000 followers and I don't ever see him tweet much about XRP. So those are the ones a lot of times it's intro I pay attention to. I haven't seen this guy before. So anyway, then BitPay. Release worldwide support for XRP, allowing BitPay users across the world to buy, store, swap, and spend XRP across all BitPay solutions. My understanding is that BitPay allows uh, businesses to, so like if you want to accept cryptocurrencies or whatever, so that people can pay you with cryptocurrencies, BitPay allows you to do it. That's the way I understand it. I had a couple of polls I put out there today because I, I'm curious myself and I figured you guys would be too. The first one is, when will Ripple make the first announcement of a customer using XRP for U.S. payments? I'll never forget it. One of the first things John Deaton said is that the, the XRP ruling, based on the XRP ruling, companies like Spin the Bits, which uses XRP for payments, um, could actually be used in the United States now. Okay? So, this is coming. We just don't know when. This is also coming and we just don't know when, and that is an announcement that Ripple is going to IPO. Um, I forgot to go over this. Most people, 57% thinks ne think next month is when Ripple will, will announce customer, um, a cut their first customer doing US payments. And 56% believe that Ripple will not announce an IPO this year. To me, that doesn't make sense. Well. What month are we in? We're in August. Well, I guess you've only got a, you've only got a few months left, but I still say, I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for 2024. Maybe that is the play. We'll see. Here is uh, this. Um, this is tweeted by Michael Saylor. This is Tom Lee, who's a Bitcoin maxi. I find it fascinating that none of these guys will say or acknowledge that XRP is the only. Not Bitcoin, not Ethereum. XRP is the only digital asset with legal clarity, with a legal ruling. Bitcoin doesn't have or congressional law. Bitcoin doesn't have it. Ethereum doesn't have it. But XRP has it. But these guys act like Bitcoin's the only one that has it. I always like hearing your price targets because you are so fearless. Um, where are you on Bitcoin by the, by the end of next year, let's say? Uh, well, if the spot... Bitcoin gets approved. Yeah. I think the demand will be greater than the, the daily supply of Bitcoin. And so the clearing price, uh, this is done by Sean Farrell, who's our crypto digital strategist, is, is over 150,000. It could even be like 180,000. But that, it's, that's only if the spot, it, only if the ETF gets approved. Yeah, and the US, a, big a, a spot US, because right. a, a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved outside right. the US. Okay. But if it's not approved, then are we just lingering around 29,000? Uh, there's still upside counts because of the happening next mm -hmm. year. So you'll have a, a drop in supply again. So the clearing price has to increase, but it won't be six figures. The fact that these people are all, all these supposed professional financial people, 
that we'll only talk about ETFs in terms of Bitcoin or Ethereum tells me that there's more going on than we know because write it down XRP is the only digital asset with legal clarity and these guys know it it's not something they don't know so they know they know something we don't know we just don't know what it is that they know um, and here again after two years of waiting, Coinbase said it has finally won approval to list crypto futures product in the U.S. Well, I said, how is the CFTC and Rostin Benham, who's the, the chairman of the CFTC, so confident um, that Bitcoin's a commodity? There's no law and there's no court ruling saying so. What about those four Satoshis? Have they spoken to Homeland Security about the meeting they had with the four Satoshis? Those are all. Those things are relevant to whether or not you do a Bitcoin futures, uh, whatever you call it, Bitcoin futures. Um, here's the futures announcement. Just in Coinbase to offer Bitcoin and Ethereum futures trading in the U.S. And I said, how how are you doing this, Coinbase? And then Paul Graywall, the general counsel of Coinbase. Neither of them have legal clarity in the U.S. Only XRP has legal clarity in the U.S. Why aren't you doing XRP futures? I, I don't understand. All right, now, we, we, I, I was talking about how um, the U.S. has a China problem in my last video, and I had shown a video of Brad Garlinghouse back in, um, I think it was 2020, 2020 maybe. This one is also from 2020. This is Brad Garlinghouse on Bloomberg. When Bitcoin is you know, more... This is a month before Jay Clayton, who helped Alibaba, a Chinese company, go public, filed the lawsuit against Rip and walked out the door. 50% of the mining in China, that China can control those technologies. And I think we as a, in the U.S. really need to get in sync with other major economies across the world and how we look at an asset like, like XRP and treat it similarly. So how concerned are you that China could, you know, given their support of it, you know, somehow, you know, start to dominate that market and give uh, the country an advantage? Look, I think the Chinese Communist Party is being very strategic and is very focused on dominating this technology. Uh, I worry that this will be the next 5G race. Uh, we lost that race, and I think we're in danger of repeating that mistake again in the battle for what I think will be the future of our global financial infrastructure and payments. And, you know, again, I, I think the irony is simply that unintentionally as a regulatory body here in the United States, we have given an advantage to Bitcoin to provide what I'll call the, the good housekeeping seal of approval from the SEC that has allowed people to like PayPal and like, you know, others that with that clarity and that certainty, they are supporting those uh, those assets and they're allowing people and entrepreneurs to build companies around them and to, to safely invest. Now, you made headlines last month when you said Ripple might move its headquarters out of the U.S. due to the lack of regulatory clarity. Now that we have uh, Joe Biden uh, becoming president-elect, are you still contemplating that? What are your hopes under a Biden administration? Well, I think a lot of these issues are very bipartisan, so I don't see it as fundamentally different between who is at 1600 Pennsylvania. I, I do think there are some subtle changes. Uh, you know, ultimately, Ripple is an American company. You know, I'm a kid who grew up in Kansas, and we're a proud U.S. company. We it, we want to stay here. We generate a lot of tax revenue for the government and a lot of high-paying jobs. But we also need a level playing field. If we can't compete effectively with these technologies, in this case controlled by Chinese miners, then we have to be able to compete on a level playing field. And so we would look we would look elsewhere. The one thing I will say that I think will change in a Biden administration is another drawback of how Bitcoin it operates is through its mining. And one percent of global energy consumption is consumed by Bitcoin mining. And in a world where we should be uh, attentive to carbon production and the impact of uh, you know the, the dynamics going on in the climate. I think the Biden administration likely will be more attuned to those dynamics. And I think that, that will bring more attention to the, the lack of efficiency in Bitcoin. So now think this through. Uh, if you don't think, no, we, I think it's pretty clear now. First of all, we've got a president who's obviously, who's, they've, they've get, got the bank records, bribed, blackmailed China. We've got... Um, 
We've got Jay Clayton, who drops the lawsuit, who helped take Alibaba public. You got Bill Hinman, who came back to make sure that the, the uh, lawsuit got f filed, who also helped Alibaba go public and was communicating with his partner at his law firm, who is now running, the, I think he's the general counsel for Ant Financial, the, uh, the holding company for Alibaba, okay? Then over here, you've got the SEC, Prometheum is the first company that the SEC approves um, and pretends like they're, this, they're a legit exchange. Then we find out that Wang Chang is not only behind uh, Prometheum and one of their original partners, but also Ethereum itself, who Jay Clayton and Bill Hinman gave a free pass to. Watch this, I put it together. That he refers to this Dr. Z Zhao Fang, okay, and says he's on their board at Prometheum. And then I went and found a clip where you see Dr. Z Fang or Zhao or whatever his name is. Here in this part of the video, he's talking about how the president of the Bank of China, think CCP, was is very involved in putting together his conference, the Wang Zhang conference there. I think they did it in Hong Kong. Then I show you a clip where Dr. Zhao is doing a seminar, a joint seminar with him and Vitalik Buterin. You couldn't make this stuff up if you tried. Watch. The third advantage is on the tech side. Prometheum's uh, lead investor and technical co-founder is a Shanghai Wangzhen blockchain. And basically, uh, we have... Uh, 50 plus blockchain engineers working on the Prometheum project. Shanghai Wangzheng blockchain is considered the preeminent force when it comes to blockchain engineering talent in the world. And they're really our partner. They're not a third party service provider. They're a co-founder of this company. Uh, the, their vice chairman, Dr. Xiao, sits on our board and we work with them hand in hand. And with their expertise, we've been able to rock and roll. I'd like to give thanks to Mr. Li Li Hu, President of the Bank of China, CCP. To this, uh, to our blockchain summit. And then here's him talking at a summit. Right there it says Zhao Feng and Vitalik Buterin. And that's Vitalik speaking Chinese. And that was a Chinese speaker, I believe. Folks, you should be very, very uncomfortable. I'm not going to cover this, but there's a video. This is a video of David Schwartz and Stefan Thomas talking about Codius. So you can check that out on your own time. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family to get your head out of your butts. We've got a China problem. And all of these, how many people, how many of the people running our country have been compromised? This is treason. Thanks for listening.